Hey guys. Oh my goodness, my lips are so dry. We were definitely exposed to COVID-19. So the other bad news is that there's a tropical storm on the way. But the desire to binge is coming. And I think I'm I think I'm the closest right now to giving up. I think I'm the closest right now to giving up than I have been during this entire time. Good news is I made it to day six. Yay! I'm trying to do a celebratory hand movement, but Ricky is preventing that. Uh, yeah, I made it to day six. This is the longest fast I've ever done by 48 hours now. And once I make it through day six, I will have fasted. I will have fasted twice as long as I ever have. So that's very exciting. The bad news is we were definitely exposed to COVID-19 and that's all I'm going to say because like I said it involves people other people other than us so this is my video son get your own video anyway um, that's all I'm going to say because it involves other people and you know that's their business oh my gosh my neck looks so weird at this angle so, the other bad news is that there's a tropical storm on the way. Fun. So, it, it's, this is stressful. Um, so, I'm worried about, you know, my kids and my husband. I'm worried about the person who um, exposed us unknowingly. I'm worried about just having to evacuate possibly i'm worried about maybe having to go through a storm here and possibly being sick and maybe having no electricity or not being able to get to a hospital because of the storm like it's a lot of stress and what do people like me who binge do when they are stressed we eat we eat a lot we eat very rich foods that are not good for you so, in true binger fashion, I'm craving burgers, like fast food burgers. I, I could go for some water burger. I could go for uh, Burger King. I could go for McDonald's. And that, that's what I'm taking. I can like almost taste it and smell it. I want it so bad. And then sweets to go with that. Probably a soda also and sweets, like some type of ice cream dessert. That's what I'm really craving because that's a typical super stress binge meal for me. I'm not going to do that. Uh, um, I did not expect to be going through such a stressful time during this fast. Um, I expected today, day six, to be a breeze. Like I expected it to be like day five. Um thought today would be a breeze because yesterday was pretty easy besides me really wanting some food but it was like normal wanting some food you know as a person who is a person and eats <laughs> but um now the binge the the desire to binge is coming and binge on like unhealthy food is coming because of all the stress i'm under <laughs> and I think I'm I think I'm the closest right now to giving up I think I'm the closest right now to giving up than I have been during this entire fast so we'll see what happens I'm trying to hold strong having going through a stressful time and having two toddlers to care for is difficult because they don't know you're going through a stressful time they don't understand that so they're still going to be toddlers and toddlers are stressful in and of themselves especially when you have two so i'm really i'm really struggling
right now. I, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to even watch videos on my phone. I've just been sitting here silently for a good long while. And that's not like me. Usually I'm at least watching a video or reading something or something when I'm just resting and relaxing. But uh, anyway, I know this show going on in the background is probably annoying. So I'll talk to you guys later when it's more quiet. Bye. Hey guys, it's like 9 p.m after 9 p.m. and the desire to binge has passed so I did it I, I made it through it I secluded myself I rested I refocused I you know gave myself the time I needed to let that pass and with the support of my husband and it has passed so I am very stoked about I am stoked about that okay like I feel very proud of myself for that. I'm glad I waited it out and I and I muscled through it instead of giving in. As you can see, I introduced some lip balm to my lips or some chapstick to my lips. So <laughs> you won't have to see that mess that you saw earlier anymore. <laughs> um, but anyway, I'm about to go to bed. Um, tomorrow will still be day six until around 2.30 in the afternoon. And then we'll move on to day seven and I will be almost to a week of fasting. That is insane. So I'll see you guys in the morning for some more vlogging and a weigh-in and everything. And I'll let you guys know about some of the symptoms I've been having. I will say today I was nauseous for a while. And I still have diarrhea and I've had some back pain around my kidneys. So, um, none of those things are uncommon and none of those things are cause for alarm. Um, it's just detox. That, that's all it is. So I'm not concerned. I'm feeling overall good. Oh, I also, I get kind of dizzy and lightheaded when I bend over for too long, which you got to do a lot when you have two toddlers. So bathing the kids was kind of torturous, <laughs> bathing them and getting them lotioned up. I actually washed both of their hair tonight too. So bathing them, washing their hair, getting them lotioned up and dressed and everything and in a diaper and everything. That was kind of, that was really hard. That was kind of torturous because you got to bend over for all of that. Um, but other than that, I feel pretty great, you know, and especially when I'm able to rest, I just feel pretty normal, honestly. It's when I start moving around that I, uh, don't feel so great. So I'm gonna journal for a while and, um, and then I think I'm gonna go to bed. Also, one thing I've been doing, I have been putting, turning my phone off, not off, I've been putting it on like airplane mode or do not disturb or any or something like that, and then putting it like in this chair over here actually which is by the bed um and it's away from me so usually I just watch videos until I fall asleep and then the phone is like right there by my head most of the night or under my pillow but um I'm getting away from that just like I'm getting away from being on social media all day I'm getting rid of I'm getting um rid of being on social media like all night until I fall asleep and sometimes it keeps me from falling asleep and I'm just on social media or watching videos like way too late in the night and then I don't get enough sleep so I'm trying not to do that you know I'm putting my phone away well before I go to sleep and I'm thinking and meditating on things and um to to get to sleep instead of just mindlessly doing social media so that's another thing I've been doing along with having very limited access to social media. So I did get back on Facebook today, but it was just to check in with my fasting groups for support and everything and to give other people support. I didn't do too much of my, I didn't scroll my news feed at all, almost at all. And, um, you know, I didn't do any of that. I just went directly to my fasting groups for the support. So, um, yeah, I'm going to clean myself up and I'm going to journal a bit and I'm going to get to bed. So thank you guys so much for being with me today because it was tough. I tell you it was tough. Today was the toughest day for sure because all of that stress just piling up, it, it makes things difficult. So I'll see you tomorrow for a little more vlogging and a weigh-in and that weigh-in should cheer me up some. So I'll see you in the morning. Hey guys, okay, sorry if you're at a weird angle that you're not used to because my arms are getting really tired holding the camera. 
I guess that's another, it's like my shoulders that get tired. Like, that's insane, okay? I've never had that happen before. So I can only, you know, blame it on the fast. But uh, that's some of my special knickknacks I have behind me there. But anyway, I'm going to try to prop my elbow on my leg and see if that helps. But uh, it's about 11, 11.05 or something a.m. the next day which means we are still in day six because my days turn over at around 2.30 p.m. So I feel good, but let me tell you, last night, well, really this morning. So this morning, the kids got me up around 4.30 and they were not about to be going back to sleep. So um, we went in the living room and we watched Boss Baby for a couple of hours and uh, the show uh, for a couple of hours. And... Um, because, you know, there's a movie and a show. And the show is actually really cute. <laughs> I've never seen the movie, though. But, um, and then I gave them a snack. And, um, and then I put them back to bed around 6. Well, after 6. Almost 7, really. So, and then I went back to bed in, with my husband. And I have been having really vivid, realistic dreams since, like, day 2 or 3. But this one was another level. So just let me back up a little bit. Last night before bed, I did myself a little ritual. You know, I won't say little ritual. It was very cleansing for me. Um, I did some meditation, some prayers, some singing, some stretching. And um, one thing that I prayed about was that me and my family have dreams that are purposeful. You know, we have dreams that tell us something we need to know and that even manifest things in our lives. So y'all, I think I entered the emotional release portion of the fasting journey. I'm about six days in and you know, that's the longest fast I've ever done by like, that's twice as long as my other longest fast. So I think I'm there and people say they get there and I think I'm there now. So, um, I don't want to go into detail because it's very personal, but the single most deep traumatic pain that I have is from childhood. Years and years and years of my childhood. And the people who were the cause of this trauma... Uh, <laughs> They don't get it. They, they just don't get it. They they don't they don't see the problem. I had a dream that was very revealing. And at the end of the dream, there was a counselor just there, a black lady. I only do black female counselors because you know that's what I am, that's what they are, they can relate. So, um, and it was a black lady counselor, and she speaks to one of the people, and they are like just not susceptible, like just not. And she's talking to them about the things that, that um, had happened throughout that day because little did they know they were going through like some trials, right? Some trials of, to see if we can bring some emotional reaction out of them. And it didn't work. <laughs> it never works. You know, in real life, it never works. And in the dream, it didn't work. And we went through this grand production <laughs> to try to get them to get it and try to get that reaction and that realization. And it did not work at all. And then I hear the counselor speaking to one of the people. And they are just not... They're just <laughs> a brick wall okay nothing is integrating into their mind so and I hear this happening and I just sit against the wall you know away they don't know I'm listening and um the counselor gets up and she comes over to me and she says okay we got about five minutes left of our time is there anything you want to say you want to come over and say while I'm here and I said no I said it doesn't matter <laughs> if nothing's gonna work and uh 
And then I actually said this out loud in my sleep. My husband heard me, but it came out as a mumble to him. But I know exactly what I said. I said, it doesn't matter because all she cares about is making sure I know she's better than me. (sighs) Out loud. (laughs) And in the dream... The uh, So when the counselor had come over to me at first, she was all smiles and, you know, trying to, you know, try, an, an encouraging smile that counselors do. And then um, when I said that, she just kind of frowned and she looked like she felt really sorry for me. And it just kind of confirmed that, yeah, she agrees, you know, with what I said. She wasn't going to smash my hope or anything or silence me. But when I said, you know, I don't need to say anything, it doesn't matter what I say. She, you know, her face kind of dropped and she gave me that knowing, sad look. (laughs) Y'all. The fact that I said that sentence out loud is telling. So I think that prayer was answered for sure. I, I was needing to be told something through my dreams. I was needing to emotionally release all of this because it's not ever going to be resolved. <laughs> there is no resolution. There will be no, what is it? Um, closure. There will be no closure on the situation. I will never get the reaction and the, and the um, you know, the realization from the people who hurt me I will never get that just moment where it clicks and they're like oh shit I hurt her like a lot (laughs) they will never that'll never happen and I've kind of known that for a while and I've kind of given up on it but that was just some real and these dreams are very realistic so that was like re-traumatizing almost the whole dream because it seemed like reality it seemed like it was really happening So, um, yeah, that was insane. And I I thank God for it because it was what I needed that, because like I said, that is, I've been through a lot. Okay. I, you know, married a narcissistically abusive man. I got beaten pregnant or not. I got kicked and thrown down pregnant. And at one point he spit in my face. He almost blew out my eardrum, um, yelling in my ear he had me in chokeholds before and I thought I was going to die. Like I was getting, I was preparing my mind to die because he was not letting me breathe. He's ripped my clothes off, ripped, like the clothes ripped against me. That hurts. Okay. There has to be a lot of pressure on you for your clothes to rip. And the worst was my panties when he, when he ripped my underwear off of me. That hurt a lot. I will never forget that. So that was traumatic as hell but that does not hold a candle that does not even compare to the trauma that I have from my childhood so that says something so um that's what I needed to release um first and I can't say that I've completely released it but that was very that was a blessing that dream was a blessing i thank god for it i really do and i'm glad i did that that prayer and meditation and that ritual last night because god was like oh that's what you want all right here you go (laughs) so all right i've blabbered on long enough let me go ahead and do a weigh-in okay as a reminder on day five i was 249 point something I i don't ever remember the point the decimal, I mean, 245.0, goodness gracious, 245 pounds. Okay, so I have lost about four pounds since yesterday, and I did pee a lot yesterday, so I'm going to say some of that is water fat, um, water weight, not water fat, but um, I do believe that that is an accurate weigh-in. Um... As you could kind of hear, I was getting out of breath doing that way in. I'm getting out of breath just kind of talking at this point. <laughs> and uh, my heart starts to race and everything. So I do need to do the, you know, I do need to have plenty of rest during this fast because it is, you know, it weakens your body. That's kind of one of the points of fasting for spiritual uh, reasons. You know, it weakens your body and it strengthens your mind. So, 
you know, I'm happy with that. I'm going to end this vlog here. Day six will start in a few hours. And I am, I mean, not day six, day seven will start in a few hours. And I am stoked about that. And when I reach one week of fasting, y'all, I got to celebrate in some way. I got to do something to celebrate. And that'll be interesting because usually I celebrate with food. So um, let's see what I can do for myself that really celebrates myself that has nothing to do with food. So that's going to be fun to figure out. And you'll see that in tomorrow's vlog. But for right now, thank you guys so much for your support, for your comments, for your likes, for your watching this. You know, thank you so much for everything. You guys are keeping, keeping me accountable. And I really appreciate that. So... How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Bye-bye.